Welcome back to BAS 121. We're going to go through uh, an example of a hotel overbooking. Uh, you can follow along. It's example 8.5. Now, let me warn you, they've made this hotel overbooking example extremely straightforward and relatively simple. And because we're going to build on it in later uh, sessions. Uh, so you you may, when we go through this, say, well, wait a minute. That seems overly simplistic. And it is. But we're going to understand the simplistic model, and then we'll make it more complicated in later sessions. So any sort of overbooking um, model really aids and supports uh, businesses that, that have a large, uh, subject to a large cancellation, and generally don't charge for any cancellation fees. So it applies to hotels and hotel rooms, restaurants and tables, airlines and airline industries, even though I think the airline industry has gone into cancellation fees and even hotels at some point. But most people on hotels meet that deadline because it's very uh, flexible. So if I cancel at four in the afternoon on a hotel, it's probably lost revenue because it's going to be hard to make up that room. So anyways, they've made some assumptions. We always want to put our assumptions up here to make our spreadsheets as flexible and variable as possible. Uh, the number of rooms available, the price of room, and the overbooking cost. The cost of having a room overbooked. If we overbook, we probably have to compensate that customer somehow. Because if I've made a reservation and I show up to your hotel room and you say, sorry, we have no room for you, uh, there needs to be some sort of compensation. So these are just the assumptions the book gave us. Now, the model or the results. Now, the model, this is where I said it gets a little simplistic. The reservation limit early on in this model is the number of rooms available. Now, I understand a lot of us are going to say, well, wait a minute. We could easily uh, reserve a lot more rooms. Isn't that the point, that we reserve more rooms than we have available? Uh, and I understand that, but I want to follow along the model, and we'll add to that as we go along. Um, customer demand they gave us was 290. The reservations is going to be the minimum between the customer demand and the reservation limits. Obviously, I can't take, I can't uh, book more rooms than I have. They gave us an assumption of the number of rooms canceled. Customer arrivals is simply the difference between the reservations made less the cancellations. Overbooked customers is the maximum between my customer arrivals minus my rooms available or my room. So if that's a negative number, then I don't have any overbook situations. So it's a maximum of zero or if I have more customers arrived than I have rooms for. So think about that for a second. My overbooked customers are the maximum of either zero because if I can't have a negative number. And the difference between how many people arrived minus how many rooms I have. So I really only have an overbook situation when I have more people arriving than I have rooms for. The net income revenue impact is the minimum. Right? Remember we said it's the minimum of the customer arrivals and the rooms times, because I can't sell a room I don't have, times the price per room less my cost of the number of customers that were overbooked times my overbooking cost. Okay, there's the hotel overbooking example.